Hey, PJ here. We all know how great kitchens are for cooking up good stuff, especially organic good stuff. But did you know that kitchens could also be a gym? It's true. As long as you have a couple dish towels and a hard floor like hardwood or linoleum so the towels can slide on it, that's all you need to turn your kitchen into a gym. So grab two towels and just follow along in real time and I'll take you through a kitchen gym workout. So we're going to start with the big muscles first, legs. And this is going to be a lunge. So you can just stay in your socks or you can use one of these towels or both of these towels for sliders to make it slipperier. We're going to start out the first one like this. Up against the wall is the best place to be because then you can balance, but you can't use it. You can't pull on a wall because it's flat. And you try to pull and you're like, wait a minute, this is flat. I can't pull this. So you can't cheat. There's no way to cheat here. All right, so what we're gonna do, so we're gonna take this foot and keep it still. And we're just gonna move the back foot forward with little stops as we come up. Just like this. About five stops on the way up. We're gonna go five stops on the way back. Now on the way back is a good time to make sure this knee stays straight over or behind that front ankle. Light touch, little stops coming forward, little stops coming up, that back foot. If you cannot hang on and just balance on your own, that's even better because you're going to get more muscles involved. Light touch, little stops on the way up with your body and little stops coming in with that back foot. Remember, this is the top, so you still have tension on all those leg muscles. Light touch with the back knee. Complete stops coming up. Just about five of them. There's the top. Complete stops coming down. So you're creating points of inertia. It's muscle breaking on the way down and you're having to overcome your own inertia on the way up. So you're using physics to make it more intense. That's five. Complete stops. We're going to do seven total or to fatigue, whatever comes first. If you get to fatigue before seven, that's fine. That's seven, counting at the top every time. So seven or fatigue, whatever comes first, then you start your splinters. And in this case, it's gonna be go down to the middle and pulse it there. We're just pulsing now until we can't pulse. So we reach fatigue. Again, if you've already reached fatigue, this is your second chance to reach fatigue. So you're gonna revisit it. And you'll know you can't pulse anymore because it feels like you're stuck. Now you're just gonna hold until you can't hold it anymore. And you know you can't hold it anymore because your foot's slipping, gravity's winning, until that back knee touches down and there's nothing you can do about it. And that's fatigue. Now we're gonna get to the other foot later. It's also important to start with a different foot each time. So if you start on Monday with your right foot, then you start on Thursday with your left foot. Good to have a day in between these workouts. Two days is even better because this is a twice a week thing. You only have to do this twice a week. All right, next one's push-ups. I like being right on the threshold of the carpet and the floor and one hand per towel. So for this one, you're gonna start all the way down at the bottom and then you're just gonna go up halfway and you're gonna stay there the whole time. You can start from the knees if you're intermediate, feet if you're a ninja, or hips if you're a beginner. Here we go. Hold it right here in the middle. Right hand, one, two, three, four, five. Left hand, one, two, three, four, five. Right hand, one, two, three, four, five. Back to center, left hand back to center. One, two, three, four, five. Now we start with the left hand forward. One, two, three, four, five. Right hand back. One, two, three, four, five. 
Left hand back to center. One, two, three, four, five. Right hand back to center. One, two, three, four, five. If you're off center, adjust, and then we do it again. This is also great for your core because you're essentially planking the whole time. Right hand, one, two, three, four, five. Left hand down, one, two, three, four, five. Right hand back to center, one, two, three, four, five. Left hand back to center, one, two, three, four, five. Nice. Let's go left hand up. One, two, three, four, five. Right hand down. One, two, three, four, five. Left hand down. One, two, three, four, five. Right hand back to center. Three, four, five. Now let's scrub the floor a little bit with the right hand only. <laughs> let's scrub it with the left hand. <laughs> We'll scrub it with both hands. Let's scrub in and out with the right hand. Let's scrub in and out with the left hand. Let's scrub with both. Get the butt up, hold the butt up. Remember, if you're fatigued at this point, you started from the feet, you have to go to the knees to continue, do it. If you started with the knees, or you're fatigued already at the knees, go to the hips, do it. So you can keep going. Now we're gonna go bottom half of the range. All the way down here. <sighs> Middle again. Sway right to left. Notice how much little space I need. I'm taking up a small section of floor here. And then we're gonna stay in the middle. We're gonna go top part of the range all the way up, halfway down. All the way up, halfway down. Notice that all the way up, my elbows are still bent at the top. So I've got constant tension on those bad boys. On the triceps, the pecs, the front of the shoulders. Gets lots of stuff. Uh, and then back to the middle. And push down with your knees as hard as you can. That's it. Push your knees into the floor. That'll increase your hand pressure. Now feel your hands pushing into the floor and little pulses right here in the middle. Push those hands down. Really feel the pressure in your palms. Pushing down with the palms. And hold to finish. See if you can push up. Push up. Push down with your hands. Hard down with your hands. Increase the pressure in your palms. Push up, up, up. Until you can't push up. Till you're stuck, and then you know you're done. You know you're done. <laughs> it's hard to talk. I'm so fatigued. Freaking dripping with sweat. I've done two things, and I'm dripping with sweat. It's amazing how good a workout you can get in your kitchen. Okay, left leg is forward this time. Right leg is back. Here we go. Little stops coming up. Two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. Five, one, two, three, four, five. Front knee, remember, over or behind that ankle. Square hips. Seven is the last one. Or fatigue, whatever came first. Maybe you're already at fatigue and you're already pulsing, and that's great because we're going to go to the middle of the range and we're going to pulse it until we can't pulse it. And we're going to hold until we can't hold. Gravity wins. Foot sliding out, and we're good. It took care of legs. Lunges are great because we're getting quads, even some hamstrings, some calf, some shin, tibialis anterior, glutes, all three of those glutes. And look at the sweat on my brow. It's crazy. And now we got hamstrings. Hamstrings, baby. So I'm gonna 
again, I'm going to be on the threshold here and I'm going to put that threshold at my waistband. Feet are either on socks or on sliders, towels. Raise up the hips. I'm going to try to keep a straight line between my knees and my shoulders the entire time. And then I'm going to slide the feet in until they're right underneath my knees and then slide them back out until they're almost straight. My hips are naturally going to come down as my feet slide out and they're naturally going to go up as my feet slide in. But the key on this one is just to always push the hips as high as they'll go. If you're a little bit above the point where you're a straight line from your shoulders to your knees, that's okay. Just keep it from getting below that straight line or coming in too far with your feet. You want to stop just when your feet reach the point where they're directly underneath your knees. You can push down with your hands and elbows if you want. Little stops coming in, little stops coming out. Always pushing your hips extra high. You're going to get some low back out of this, some glutes out of this. All three hamstrings and a little bit of calf. Extra high hips. Little stops out, almost to straight legs. Little stops in. I'm doing five or seven stops each direction. It's important to make them small, little stops. Check those hips, make sure they're up. Push those hips high the whole time. That's the way, extra high hips. I don't know how many that is. Five or six. We'll call this six. So you're going to fatigue again or to seven reps, whatever comes first. We'll call this seven. And now we're going to go out halfway. So it's not all the way in, not all the way out. And we're going to do a little bicycle back and forth right here. Tiny little mini bike. Get those hips back up. Extra high hips. Hold it. Let's scrub the floor. Let's do some twisties. Extra high hips. That's it. Way up there. Twisting. Let's do toes up. Toes down. Toes up. Toes down. Hold it high. Toes up. That's it. Now we're going to pulse back and forth. Little pulses. Extra high hips. Get those hips back up. And freeze it. Highest possible hips. Good. Holding to finish. You'll know you're done because you can't keep that straight line there. And when that happens, you can come down out of it. Finish up. Oh, heavens. That's some good stuff. Now, if you don't have a threshold, it's just all hardwood. Just put your back on a towel and anything to anchor you. That'll be good enough. Next. Find somewhere where you can stretch your arms out to the side. And I'm gonna use these towels here for my body pad. We're gonna start with Superman. All the way up like this. One, two, three, four, five. Five is as high as you can go with your feet and with your hands. And we come down. One, two, three, four, five. We go again. One, two, three, four, five, down. Up, one. Arms are as straight as they can go. Reach out as far as you can. Down, one, two, three, four, five. Up, one, two, three, four, five. Down, one, two, three, four, five. We go to Batman. On this one, hands are straight up from your ears. So you can still see them in your peripheral vision. Start at the floor. One, two, three, four, five. Down, one. Two, three, four, five. Up, one, two, three, four, five. Feet are coming up, hands are coming up. Now both are coming down, stopping just before they touch the floor. Two, three. And at the top, you're squeezing your shoulder blades together as hard as you can. You're reaching as high as you can, making sure your hands are still forward, straight out from your ears, preventing them from coming back. You're staying forward. So we're working the upper back, rear deltoids. And 
And now we're gonna bring the hands back, palms up. Now we're like Aquaman. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Again, you're gonna squeeze your shoulder blades together at the top. And let them spread apart when you come down. And hold it up top. Move your hands straight out. Straight out like Batman. And now we're gonna hold with Superman. Pulse until you can't pulse. And then hold until you can't hold. Pick a spot on the wall. You'll see your hands starting to fade down. You can't hold that spot anymore. Gravity's winning and you're winning because you're at fatigue and then you know you're done. Oh man, I'm dripping. Freaking hard freaking workout. What the heck? Okay, now we're gonna make a spine pad. You can do this on your carpet too. Hands go down by your sides. We got abs now. Legs straight up. Pop them up. Small range of motion. If you're going too high, if you're more than about an inch, it's probably because your legs aren't vertical. Thighs always have to be vertical. This way of vertical is okay, but vertical or this way. Now hold it high and now twist. You can push down with your hands as hard as you want to. You can even push down with your elbows if you want. That's it. Now, bend the knees, big knee pull. Pushing down hard with your hands, big range, big pull. All the way in, back out. All the way in, back out. All the way in. All the way in, hold it in, and twist it. Twisting, twisting, twisting. Waistband is off the pad. Like straight up again, thighs are vertical. Straight up and down. Straight up, small range, straight up. We're getting low abs when we do the leg lifts. We're getting upper abs when we're doing the knee pulls. So it's important to keep the legs out this way, vertical or this way of vertical, in order to get those low abs. If you let them creep in, then you're getting upper abs and you're just working those for both times instead of alternating between them. Hold it high, twist, twist, twist. Knee pulls. Twist it, twist it, twist it. Now we're gonna do four leg lifts, one. Two, three, four and twist. And four knee pulls. Two, three, four and twist. Ouch. Oh, it's burning. Three leg lifts. And twist on the third. Uh, uh. Three knee pulls. Uh -huh. Twist on the third. Get those obliques. Uh. Two leg lifts for lower abs. Keeping those uh, thighs vertical. Getting hard to talk. Uh, and then we got finished with one leg lift with a twist. Uh, and one knee pull with a twist. Low feet, low feet. The whole time you're doing knee pulls. Always when you're doing knee pulls, low feet. Uh, and then uh, there's a burn. That really hurts. Oh, I love it. Yeah, that is a full body workout in your kitchen. Wow. Hey, sheesh. All you need is a kitchen. All you need is some towels and your own body. And look at the sweat. I'm dripping, I'm dripping. Dripping off of me. It's crazy talk. Oh, now go get your water and get your protein. <sighs> and do this twice a week. But like I said before, once you'll still get results. You'll still have slow improvement. If you're going to complete muscle fatigue to the point where you hit that wall, gotta hit the wall in order to send the message to the muscles that they need to change. They get that message, they will change. 
This kind of workout will give you strength, endurance, and cardio all at the same time. And the workout itself takes hardly any time. I mean, how fast was that? That was, that's no time. Anybody has time for this. And the cool thing about these methods is there's so much time under tension, you're not gonna bulk up. If you wanna bulk up, this program isn't for you. It'll give you strength, more strength and endurance, but it's not gonna bulk you up. If you wanna just get toned and increase your muscle definition and look fit but not huge, this workout's perfect because all that time under tension is endurance training. And when you're doing endurance training, you can't bulk up. But the muscle fatigue, full failure at the end, that's strength training. And so when you combine both of them, you get strong, you get lean, you get defined, and your endurance is increased drastically, but you don't get bigger. Toned, not bigger. Yeah, buddy. It's a great fat burning workout too, so it'll make you leaner as well. After this workout, because I went to fatigue so many times, my fat burning metabolism is gonna be elevated for about four hours. Can't get that with traditional training. If you have time, it's a good idea to do some stretches afterwards. And if you have time, it's a good idea to do a little bit of warm up before, maybe three, four minutes, just to get your body warm, because warmer muscles are stronger muscles, therefore you're able to put more into the workout, you get more out of the workout. But the warm up before and the stretching after isn't actually necessary. And if you're really hurt for time, you can skip it because this type of training is so safe. You can't hurt yourself. It's so controlled and it's just body weight. So as far as the warm up goes, it's not really an injury prevention thing. It's just a strong thing. But like I say, it's expendable. And then afterwards, if you're stretching as you're cooling, then you'll have more lasting effects of that flexibility improvement. Plus, it'll augment your strength gains a little bit. And every little bit helps, right? Fast results. That's what I'm talking about. That's what this is all about.